two. So in getting started, it'll be similar to the circular insert we created. This one will be just a animated version. So I'll press GZ minus one, GZ minus one with my numpad on, and then we'll focus on this cube. I'll press D and switch over to circle, and we'll start off by bringing out a circle in join mode, and then we'll shift to keep it live. And then I'm just gonna grab this bottom face and control click mark to just bring that out. But we'll press one to reset the profile and we'll bring this face in. And then of course, when we control click mark this, we have to shift scroll it up the stack and then press N in order to get it to look exactly the way you would envision. But now we are getting in there. So the next thing from here is to use this circle as a jump off point. And instead of actually going forward with this, we could just press T and solidify it, just have a little bit of fun and then jump off this point and bring it down and we could just press B and roll it till it's nice and round. And from here, we're just gonna press X, turn this into a slice and press one in order to get rid of our cutters. And we're just gonna look at this in top view. And the first thing I'll do is draw a box on the left side. We'll press L in order to turn that off. And the same thing here. And we'll just modify or mirror that to the other side and just cut this into a quick and easy little handle. Just little cuts every so often to just add to the look. And there we go, we've created our basic insert. And so we can just take this and just have it rotating on the inside of this. And that will be our desired result. So we can actually also take this opportunity to say, bring back one of our previous cutters that was round like this one, and we'll just convert it into a curve and press S to keep that. And we'll just bring that down on the inside. So now we have this little curve for it to spin around on. And we'll actually move this to layer one since we made it off of a cutter. It might've been placed on a cutter collection. So the next thing from here that I like to do is just shift A, insert an armature. And so with our armature, we're just gonna look at it from side view and just play with snapping to just basically bring it back to where it was but looking at it how we want it to be looked at. So when I'm dealing with rigs, I like to, you know, for the most part, show them in front, but also display them as a stick. So let's go under viewport display and we'll just turn this into a stick and that'll just make our lives easier. So the idea is to just make this thing rotate forever. And the rest of this is just a supporting rig. It doesn't matter. So if we look at our transform, this is the wrong one. We're looking at the object itself, but if we go and locate the actual bone itself, this one's the one that we actually want, but we don't want to use a Cortonian. I find that actually changing it over to XYZ Euler makes it a lot more sane for me. So we'll just type in a driver of pound frame times 0 0.15, the most basic driver that y'all see me use all the time. And that's basically our result. So we can go back to the beginning, maybe even go a frame back to frame zero to get this completely neutral. And we could control tab to get out of this. So with this shape, we want to definitely smart apply because we don't want any drama that comes with this thing. And then with this thing, we can, I believe under window or under edit, we can turn off lock object modes and this will allow us to select an object, but select the bone and that's actually not the right bone. So we wanna select the correct bone, which is this one, and we'll choose bone. And if we let it play, we now have this insert that will just rotate in perpetuity. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and adjust our rig a little bit to make it you know, very uh, unnoticeable, something like that. And we'll just go back to object mode, and this is our rig so far. 
And so basically whenever we insert this, it will just insert and be spinning around. And I found that this insert was also a good example to show that, you know, there's multiple systems inside of KitOps when it comes to creating inserts. For the most part on these videos, you'll see me using a insert, the new insert system where you can create inserts in the middle of your scene, but you don't see me as much going into factory mode as I used to. In fact, in the older content, I lived in factory mode when it came to showcasing KitOps. So let's uh, bring our cutters back, which I already know is gonna be regrettable. Let's do it the gentle way, where we just turn them on one by one until we start finding the more problematic elements that we don't need like that one. But this is pretty much all that we need right here. So I will take the rig, the ring, this piece, this piece, and just parent them to this. So we parent it to object, keep transform. And if we move this around, it should work out. But because we're in box cutter, you know, got to always throw that in. Because we're in box cutter and snapping's on, whenever you hold control, it will deselect objects that can't be snapped to. So we basically lost our selection. So now that we're not in box cutter, we can actually snap it to this and it will behave as expected. So now we just have this crazy insert that will just spin whenever you bring it in. And then of course for this, we can use alt M and just give it an emissive material. So that way, whenever it comes in, it'll be spinning and all that good stuff. And we could do the same thing to this thing. Just give it a blank material. Maybe even put a bevel on it, you know, because it's our special piece we're bringing in. Everything else is part of a cutter. So notice that I'm able to select just this piece. And then whenever I go to Kit Ops and we look at our new demo pack, we're basically making circular five. So no more circulars after this. So we create insert and we see that it brought it over, but it also brought over a little bit of rubbish. So I'm just gonna actually manually delete this rubbish because it's easier. And if you have the latest update to Kit Ops that came out a few days ago, now whenever you change things over to be a union, it'll behave as it's supposed to. Previously, it was requiring a save in order for these things to update, which I found to be a little unsatisfactory. You know, with these tools, it's always a um, improvement process. But now this is the insert that we have created. And notice that because I'm not in a factory scene, I don't actually have the option to mark this as an animated insert, which is something that I was actually missing. And marking something as an animated insert means that you can have the timeline begin playing when you insert it, which is useful for inserts that have animations attached to them, of course you may want to avoid this in certain scenarios where you don't actually want that to happen. But to bring it up in factory, we're gonna actually load the insert itself, just like so. And so now we're in factory, and we're in factory because we opened the insert file itself. And notice that now I can choose animated. Notice that this is the main OBJ. Its parenting is messed up, so we wanna apply all transforms, then save it and this insert should be good to go. To find out in action, we'll press N, and you know, first thing is uh, we'll you know, deal with the auto smoothing of this, just to make sure it showcases smoothly. We'll go under KO, not KO export, we'll go under new, I've been really used to that KO export folder. And we can see that every time I insert, it will just begin playing its animation, but it inserts exactly as you would expect it to. In fact, we could turn off our shading and you can see these things just, just playing back in the viewport as we're inserting them. And then if we were to jump over to render and slap this with a blank material, we could see that it also looks good and pulses. And if we wanted to really get it pulsing, we could press Q whenever we're inside of look dev and turn on the, basically the bloom. But if you're wanting to turn it on manually, there's render settings and hops at the top where you can just go in and turn up the bloom and deal with it how you want. But of course, with these sort of inserts, you definitely want to let the bloom come through. But with that, we can wrap up this video and I'll thank you all for watching and I hope to see some animated inserts.